Welcome back to another clay video. Today we are going to create the inside of Nook's Cranny from Animal Crossing New Horizons. So it's been about four weeks since my last video. I was feeling a little bit burnt out on making videos and I don't want to keep making these when I'm not enjoying them. But now after this break I feel refreshed and ready to get back into making videos. Like most games, we don't get a perfect top view of areas, so this is my best guess of what the size of Nook's Cranny is. I'm going to be using foam board to create the walls and the floor, and I found it best to take off this paper layer when you're cutting the foam. I tried a few different brands, and the only one that seems to really peel off is the one from the dollar store. The ones, for example, from Walmart are a couple dollars, and they don't actually peel off, and they don't cut very well. So this is one of those situations where the cheaper product is actually better. I've cut out and labeled all of the walls, and I want to try to keep these together because I don't want to mix up which walls go where. I've printed some different floor patterns on top of some sticker paper, and we can start coating the floor of our nook's cranny. You might notice a few different times through this video that the quality and lighting change, and that's because I've been filming this video since last December. It was kind of a side project that in between videos I would just put a little bit of time into and eventually it would get completed. So some of the clips are months apart from each other and in those times I've gotten a new camera and new lighting and just altogether gotten better at making quality videos. These are some coffee stir sticks and we will be using these for the flooring in the wooden section over here. For any of these things that I'm gluing together in the video, I'm using tacky glue. It's a very cheap but very effective glue. It's kind of like an upgraded version of Elmer's. We can assemble some of the walls, and then we can bust out some basswood, also known as balsam wood, which is a very thin, easy to cut wood. And this is how I'm going to construct a number of different things inside of the shop. This is going to be the sort of upper level where you can find items up on top. And let's give it a nice little railing. After I've given the glue some time to dry, we can start coating it with some brown paint. On the back of this platform where you can actually buy the items is a little blue platform. This glue takes a little while to dry so I use some bag clips to clamp it into place. After drying, our little display stand is ready to get placed into the cranny. Now let's create the mysterious back room which I'm sure I'm not the only one wonders what is up this ladder. My guess is that it's where Timmy and Tommy live since they don't actually have a house on the island. Or maybe it's just a back storage room where they keep the extra items. I was always hoping they would add in some type of update that let you go up the ladder, but sadly that never happened. And since we're not allowed to go in this area, we need to rope it off. I've created these tiny little loops for the edge of the rope. And along the little edges of it, we'll paint it with some silver markers. Now the next thing we can build with some wood is this little display shelf, which ended up being my favorite detail in the whole Nook's Cranny. Inside of this display in the game, you can get flooring and wallpaper and tools and a number of other items that change each day. There's always going to be the same items, but different variations. So if you're looking for a certain wallpaper or flooring, it's good to check back every single day. For the glass on the front, I'm using this thick plastic, which is from a picture frame. It's actually the frame that was from the Pokeball video I did. After I made all of the Pokeballs, I put them inside of the shadow box, and I didn't need the plastic, but I thought I might need it in the future, and it turns out I did. On the bottom shelf, inside of this little box, we're going to create the flooring and the wallpaper. 
Despite all of the flooring and wallpaper looking different when you place them down in your house, the item itself always looks the same. And of course, I could have tried to make this with clay, but I think this project is all about using as many different materials as I can. Sometimes it gets a little bit boring only using clay, and I want to start expanding into different areas. On the other shelves, we have various different things like medicine in case you get stunned by a bee, or different seed packs. So let's start creating those with clay. These first ones here are going to be the seed packs. So let's just add in some little flowers. And these are the medicine. In case you're not familiar with Animal Crossing, if you shake trees, you can find different things like bells or even furniture, but sometimes you'll shake out some bees, and if you don't happen to catch them quick enough with your net, this happens. Personally, I don't really care about it and just let my character look like this, but for those of you who don't want to look like a freak, the way to fix this is medicine. Our shelf is complete and looks amazing, so let's get that into place. Now the next thing we'll work on is the cash register where you can check out. Although you don't actually check out at the register, you just give your bell straight to Timmy and Tommy. So there's really no need for a cash register except purely for looks. Here I'm creating just a little candy bowl to add onto the counter. And this is going to be one of those little things you see in stores where they add the receipts onto. So let's create our own little receipts with some random little scribbles. And very, very carefully, we can place these onto the spike. I've created a few other display areas for the items, and we can take some string to start creating the banner that goes around the entire shop. This section was going to be for the Patreon giveaway that month because this was the prize, but it turned out that this video was a few months late. But I like the confetti raining down from the sky, so I left it in the video anyway. After attaching the banner, we have our first customer. It's Zippy! What looks like a couple seconds is actually about four months between those two clips. I 3D printed these Timmy and Tommy figures, and we have a surprise visitor, Mooney the Cat. As you all know, I have absolutely no artistic talent when it comes to painting things, so I'm gonna pass these off to my girlfriend who is really good at painting and offered to help paint some things in my videos. While those are getting painted, let's start creating some of the different items that will be for sale. In the little specialty area, I wanted to create this racetrack because I really like this item in the game. And it kind of reminds me of when I made those Mario Kart tracks. These are going to be the tiny little cars that are going to be on the track. Let's get those into place, and we can move on to our next item, which is the fortune teller set. It was hard to tell what exactly was on these cards, so I just decided to make my own pattern of a sun and a moon, and then whatever you want to call this red thing. In the back we have a nice little crystal ball, and some dark red candles. And next up is some cat grass, because as you know I have three cats, and of course I had to add something cat themed into this video. So we're going to cut out these tiny little blades of grass and carefully place them inside of the pot. After we bake those, we can place them down using some super glue. And here is the completed Timmy and Tommy. I think they look just amazing, and it's going to bring so much life into the shop. And now we have a special message from Timmy and Tommy. <laughs> we 
With that being said, let's get to work on making these items. After getting the basic shape of it, we can start adding in a wooden texture across the entire thing. When I make wooden textures, I like to add in these little tiny holes because I feel like it just adds that extra little touch of detail. Now let's add in all of the little stubs that you grab onto. I've only climbed on these rock walls a few different times, but they are a lot of fun. I find that they're usually pretty short, maybe like 20 feet, and I would like to climb up a really, really high one that could take a lot of strength and skill to get up. The ones I've gone on are fairly easy to get up and takes, you know, maybe 15, 20 seconds. Now the next thing we're going to create is the DJ turntable. Just like every other item in the game, there's tons of different color variations. And I decided on going for the pink one since I feel like there isn't enough color in this store. And of course, because the pink kind of resembles the Carabix pink donut. Let's start adding in all of the different knobs and sliders that are on this table. We have a little LCD screen here. And finally, the arm with the needle to actually make the record play. I would say our table is complete, so let's move on to the Papa Bear. This comes in, of course, multiple different colors and patterns, but I'm going for the basic classic teddy bear. The face gets a little bit complicated because of this little smile that's very typical on stuffed animals. Now let's make some dents for the eyes and fill those in with some black. Finally, a little pad of tan on the feet and our bear is complete. So let's get these items into the shop. And that is our final detail, so here it is, Nook's Cranny from Animal Crossing New Horizons. I hope you all enjoyed the video, it was a lot of fun creating this little shop, and I'm looking forward to creating more rooms and scenes like this in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.